Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be about reversing wigwag balls. This is one of the harder patterns to nail perfectly. Everything has to be set up just right and all the kicks have to be exactly even to get that reversed pattern to look good. So here we have some discs. This is the one from the video. <clears throat> it's got some medium size kicks, good terms, and it's nice and centered in the disc, nice and flat. We will be going over how to achieve this. But here are some practice tries. This is just a little bigger of kicks. So I took the kicks and I went a little further and I just compressed them a little more so they were sharper. We'll touch on the video on how to get the different styles of wig wags. This one maybe has some littler bumps, littler kicks, and it has a totally different effect than the larger kick. Here's one with the orange forward. You can see how just flipping the pattern over really changes it. These patterns are really different depending on where you pop the hole and what you decide to show. And you know, I am human. <laughs> it took a couple tries. This one, terms are different size. One's too big, one's too small. The whole thing the hole got popped off center, the whole thing's kind of slumped, but we would kind of call this a floater where you take the same color into the same color and the wigwag kind of appears to be floating in the disc there. So, we're going to touch on all that today in the video. Let's get to it. All right, welcome back. So here I'm getting my material out of the kiln. It's preheated to 1050 degrees. And then I'm just going to wipe off any residual kiln dust that may have been left on there from the kiln brick. And this tubing was cut on the infinity cutting wheel. You can see it's kind of triangular, so I'm just going to take an octagonal reamer and round that out so it will accept a 12-7 handle. I like the 12-7 handles for the stretch. Gives you a little more handle to kind of build heat against. This one just has a little bit of a lip on it, so I'm going to come in here and just wipe this off so I get a nice clean connection to the material. Earplugs, so I have air pressure when I go to expand the seal. And I'm just going to heat the lips of both of these and kiss them together. And here I'm just kind of riding the top of the flame <clears throat> and I'm putting more heat into the vac stack tubing because it's thicker and it has color. So, you know, a little more heat into where the meat is. And then onto the straightening tool or the bench roller. I use this tool a lot in these videos. Just keeps everything really on center. Nice, easy way to get it on center. You're not carrying the weight, holding it up in your hands. And then I'm just gonna bump up to a big flame and I'm gonna build a lot of heat into this and stretch it down eventually. And it's important to keep this really straight. So I'm going back and forth with my hands. I'm not rolling one direction. And there you can see the glass is starting to accept the heat. And once I have a good heat base in there, I'll start to give it some pulls and kind of see where my, my heat base is. Again, going back and forth when it gets soupy like this. And a little puff of air is important to round everything out before you stretch it down. Some of the colors are stiffer than others, so you might get like a flat side or a soft side that's collapsed so just a little puff of air blows everything around right before you stretch it and these little flashes aren't ideal but they'll help me get the best stretch i can 
there I'm just kind of using gravity. I put the side with less heat up so that the heat travels up towards the fatter side and I can get a good stretch in it. So here I have the stretch and I've located, you know, viewers left, viewers right side being a nice little section. So I'm gonna cut it here with the Infinity cutting tool. You can see it kind of bumps up just a hair. It's really important that these wigwag blanks are pretty uniform. That's gonna make your end product a lot better. So I just put a little mark in there with the Infinity cutting tool and snap it. And now I'm gonna round this out so it'll accept some 9.5. And this is where I'm gonna bump down to 9.5. This section of Axtack tubing I've pulled down is about 9.5 millimeters, maybe a little under. You can see it matches up really good with the handle there. I would say a good range for these stretches is 8 to 10 mil. Here, back on the bench roller, just making sure everything is really in line. And then I have a little taper there and a little bit of a twist. So I'm gonna come back in and just build a little heat into this little taper and stretch it down so it's that same diameter as the rest of the pull. There you go, that's looking pretty good. jump down in flame and I'm just going to use the infinity cutting tool to cut this off and add a 9.5 handle. And here we go, just a little wiggle snap, Pop, pops right off. And I don't like these handles to be too small or too large. If your 9.5 handle is too large, you're carrying a lot of weight, and if they're too small, your hands will be too close to the flame when it comes to blow this out. So I have a really specific length I like where the piece is balanced in my hand, but not too long or too short. So I will definitely cut a little bit off or go find a longer one so I'm not battling through this. You want this process to be as smooth as possible for you. It is really hard to make this reversed <clears throat> wigwag design look perfect. So anything you can do like the bench roller, keeping it straight, the right size handles, all work in your favor to getting that good end design. And so I'm gonna start here with the terminations. So, you know, I'm in, in a nice size flame here and uh, we use the same flame and I'm actually gonna put in both terminations first. And you can collapse these, especially when you get down near around that eight mil tubing. That tubing is gonna wanna collapse before you put the spiral in. So I'm spinning it a little, puffing into it, spinning it a little, puffing into it. and. You know, you can really go wrong here if you have a ton of material in your termination and it's thicker than where you're putting your kicks. So the idea here is to keep that wall weight all the way through that termination the same as where you're going to add in the kicks. And I'm going to add the second termination over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, you know, twist it a little bit, puff some air, twist it some more, puff some air, and keep that wall weight perfect because that's gonna transfer into your end product. If one of your terms has a bunch of meat in it, you're gonna have a big funny looking term. And you know, you can put this termination in afterwards. I've kind of found that I like putting it in first because it allows me to really work these in nice and even, get them to the same wall weight and same diameter as the tubing with the same amount of spin in there, which makes for a better end product. And I'll show you how to kind of fade into that termination a little later. There's a little technique where if you come up short on your kicks, you just kind of twist that termination down onto your kicks. 
So here I'm, I sped this up, spent a minute adjusting. I am working on a Herbert Arnold Zenit 40 millimeter with a center fire. Later in this video, I'll show you some other torches and flames I like to use for this process. So here I'm just heating right underneath that termination where it stops in a very, very thin band. And once everything's hot and ready to move, you're actually compressing the glass together. You can see how if there's a little bump there, you're compressing it and twisting your hands in opposite directions. And these these kicks aren't very big, so it's, it's a really small movement and it has to be done pretty much the same every time. So here I've bumped over and I'm right in the valley there next to that bump. I'm gonna heat the same band and once it's hot and moving, I'm gonna bring it up, compress it. And then here, if this is your chance, if it's not perfect, you can see there I'm kind of pushing on it. If it's not perfect, you can make some adjustments when it's up in your face and you're looking right at it. And then you just repeat this a ton of times. The more kicks always looks better. But you know, if you're starting, do some three kickers, some five kickers, you know, start small and you'll have a better chance of getting the same size kicks. Once you start putting, you know, seven plus kicks in there, there's just more chance to have some get off. So maybe start small and then build up to longer pieces. And then you're obviously going back and forth, you know, <clears throat> you're taking this, heating it up, twisting it one way, moving over, twisting it back the other. That's where the term wig lag comes from. And then every kick, I'm bringing it up in my face and I'm looking at it. I'm making sure I'm using, you know, key lines in there when it's hot, like the teal around the yellow. I'll make sure that the teal is matching up with the teal every time when it's bumped out. And when I come back, I'll make sure those teal match on the bottom and I'll use some some lines on the other side is reference to like maybe that purple line on the other side is what I'm going to use. So as it's spinning, wherever you're at, you can kind of see how your kicks are looking. And there's just a little bit of compression. This compression is gathering the tubing and it's going to make blowing it out into a ball easier at the end and it also can make your kick sharper so if you're pulled down to like an eight mil and you're doing that compression you're actually going to make a sharper kick than if you're you know doing less compression at like 10 mil so if you want like wigwags with really sharp kicks pull it down tight and gather it and compress it as you're making that twist and it'll it'll make your kicks sharper this ball is kind of in the middle. It's not really rounded out and it's not uber sharp. Sometimes the uber sharp kicks will get kind of washed out. The tips will get washed out when you encalmo it because it's encompassing maybe more than half of the wigwag ball when it's flat. So, you know, if you don't want that spin of the points of the kicks when you reverse it, there is a happy medium and each pattern is different. Here are some other flames I would use for wigwagging. The needle flame on the GTT is great. And then this is a hand torch with a Noswar 1.5 mil Hornet tip and a Griffin stand. This right here is another great wigwag flame. I actually use that a lot. It just requires jumping from torch to torch. And for this video, it was easier to film everything in one location and not be shifting the cameras around. So those are the other, other flames I would use that I have access to right now. And here I sped the end of this up. And you know, it's about consistency. I noticed in this video when I was editing it, 
each heat took about 10 seconds and each time I pulled it out and looked at it, it took about five. So there is a rhythm and a time. A good rule of thumb is you never want to change your flame unless you have to. There's some situations where you might need to change your flame, like the tubing's got a little growth to it or you're running a little hot and your kicks are getting bigger. But ideally you're gonna set this flame and you're not gonna to touch it while you're putting the kicks in. And then you'll jump back up to that bigger flame to do the termination. And this last kick landed pretty good in that spiral and I just went in and I heated that spiral just a little bit and I just twisted it back down and brought it right up to that kick. So that's the technique for doing your, your terminations first. And now I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna blow it into a ball. And this first heat is more about just evening this tubing out and getting those little ridges you've created from the compression. If your ridges are too big and you compress too much, you're gonna get folds and you're gonna get clear. That's kind of pushing your color down, not ideal. So this is a balancing act of getting these hot, but not actually pushing them together and letting them fold. Sometimes I won't even blow into it in this first heat. I'm just going in and I'm trying to even out those compression bumps and get a better starting point to blow this out. But here I've kind of worked down in thirds. So, you know, three little blowouts, always minding your hands, making sure you're not twisting, but if you do get a little off, you can come back once they're all blown into a ball and kind of realign everything. <clears throat> so now I'm working between the three spots I blew out to blow this out into a ball. So here I'm getting close. It's a uh, looking like that football shape and I'm, you know, I'm bringing it up to my face. I'm looking, I'm letting it cool down just a sec so I can see what's going on and I'm making adjustments as needed to keep those kicks perfectly straight. And right now I'm just worried about really getting the kicks blown around. And then later I'm gonna take the terminations and size them and then add them into the ball. So I'm getting pretty close here, getting that good football shape that we're looking for. And you can see I'm just making adjustments, looking in there, checking my cue lines, making sure everything's where I want it as it's kind of cooling down and showing me everything I want to see. So it's looking good. There's the first show of the kicks. They look, they're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna rip this clear handle off back at the clear. <clears throat> and this is kind of where you get to decide how much of a termination you want. You know, a full rotation is gonna be a big termination. Half a rotation is gonna be a medium sized termination. And you know, sometimes you can do no terms, which is gonna be just picking back to the kicks. And people have been asking about this move here, the termination. <clears throat> So I'm just picking ever so gently and you can kind of see there, my picks got less and less material each time. The idea isn't to remove material, it's more to pull the clear over the color and make that color exposure as small as possible. If you have color exposed there, you're gonna burn it up in this next step of rounding it out because you gotta get this nice and hot. Oh, there's Ben helping me with the cameras, thanks dude. So I'm, I'm spinning back and forth here. If you spin one direction, your wigwag is going to get a big slow turn in it. So I'm going back and forth when I'm bl blowing this round. Always looking at the cue lines, making sure everything is where I want it. This is the last chance you get to make adjustments. You know, if you're a little shifted or you're a little off, you could punny to this and you could realign everything. You can even take a little section and maybe push it back into where you want it but ideally everything's going to lay out you're going to keep it straight the whole way through the process but 
this is life that never happens all right popping this hole is really important as you can see i haven't added that bottom termination so i'm actually popping that hole about a millimeter lower than i think is center on that ball because i'm I'm gonna add more material into that bottom ball when I add that termination. Here's a good little trick using the Elmarver is a brace for the punny that's on center. You obviously can't do this on off center punnies, but that's a great way to, you know, if you add a lot of coffee in the morning and you're shaking around, you can use that to kind of get a nice straight punny on there. And here's where I'm gonna go and add the second termination. So I've picked it down to where I think is matching the other side. And back to the terminations again. The first pick's gonna pull off a lot of material and I'm gonna kinda pull it all to a point. Check it out. And right there I'm looking to see if that matches the other termination. And here the picks just get smaller and smaller until that last one was barely anything. But I've successfully pulled that to a point and then kind of pulled the clear down to the smallest point and there's always going to be color exposed there but you just have to minimize it and you don't want to remove too much material if you're getting everything hot you're going to just rip that term out and it's going to there's going to be no color left and it's going to wash out so here i'm just using a piece of cut nine five as a sofietta to blow some air into this ball and round that other side out <clears throat> And you want these wigwag balls to be as even and wall weight as possible for when you go to in column of them. Oh, Ben's got Trevor dog. <laughs> so here I'm just picking off the clear, cleaning up my next punny. And this is going to be an off axis punny, which are a little harder. So I'm just flashing the wigwag ball a little bit. You want a little heat in the wigwag ball and a rip and hot tip and you let it cool down just to the right temperature and you'll get a cold seal with like a little crease in there so when you go to pop it off it breaks even if this is too hot it's going to remove material it's going to break out a chunk of your wigwag ball if it's too cold it's going to fall off when you're trying to do these maneuvers here like open the hole so here i'm just using one blade of the true flame working jacks to get that small hole open and you want to open these holes small at first because if my punny's dead center in the front of my wigwag right now and I take a small hole and I open it up big, <clears throat> it's going to help keep that wigwag centered. So here I am just opening up that small hole and then that's going to align with my punny which should be directly in the center of what you want to show in your reverse pattern. And there I am kind of going inside the ball and pushing out. You don't want to use an octagonal reamer there. You just you create a lip and you're pushing straight up where you kind of want to go inside and push the wall out more. I'll touch on that later in the video. And here I have the piece I'm going to use to back. And this is a great little trick for a quick flare on some 9.5 or 12.7 in the heat of the moment. Just get that to the size hole I'm going to attach it to. Just spin it on the corner of your marver. A little puff of air to help <clears throat> solidify the seal. And then back to the bench roller to make sure this is on center. And these take a long time to set up. And I actually spun that. Oh, I guess I'm gonna do it right here. So see, it's got a little spin to it, but I wanna spin that more. When we're working with solid color back stack tubing, 99% of the time we're spinning it up. It kinda of hides the lines and makes it more workable. But there's certain times where you wanna leave the lines straight because they have cool properties or it goes with the flow of your project but mostly I'm spinning this solid stuff up a little bit tightens up the lines and when you blow it out you don't get clear spots kind of between each line the lines are all nested together and it looks like one solid color so there I've kind of laid in the first spin and 
tapered it down to my handle size and got everything on center. Oh, come back into focus now. I'm getting close. So now I'm gonna <clears throat> take off the chunk that I need. I like to go by a two thirds, one third rule. Two thirds for the disc material, one third for the wigwag ball material. And this is gonna give you a smaller reverse wigwag with a little, you know, border of the disc color. If you want your wigwag to take up the whole disc, obviously do a 50 50 split. So here back in the infinity tool and just laying in a little crease, giving it a little, just a little compression together. And you can see I spun it there too. So that's gonna meet up with the spin I left in the back and the handle. Mess with the camera a little bit here. It is a challenge to film and blow glass. And hey, there it was ready, it just popped off. So now I have the, the blank I'm ready to blow out. I'm gonna blow this out into a football shape. And then I'm gonna encalmo the ball into it. And I'm gonna blow that into a ball. And then from that ball shape, I am going to form the disc. And here I'm just adding a handle with the hot seal. I didn't even knock that off. I just used the material I gathered and melted it all into a handle. And now I'm gonna spin this whole, oh, cleaning my torch up a little bit there. These uh, Herbies do get a little carbon buildup even if you're running air. But now I'm gonna spin this whole thing up to match the two spins I put in the handle side and the hot seal side. So, you know, I'm just gonna build in the best, most even heat base that I can. Herbies are really nice for this. They are known for building in really even heat bases for hollow work, so. I do like this torch for shaping a lot. So here you can see I'm initiating the spin and I'm just gonna try to match what I did in the handle and on the front. And then here we go into the football shape. So there's a nice little football shape. Now I just gotta rip off all this meat from where I attached. And here's another chance to see a termination, ripping off a lot of material and then, you know, slowly making it less and less and less. And then I, I am gonna round this out before I encalmo the ball into it. That front is probably a little thicker than it should be, so I'm gonna get this whole thing hot and kind of even out the wall weight. And hopefully it's gonna be similar to the wall weight of the ball, so when they come together, there's not a lot of, you know, trying to even out wall weight later. <clears throat> And you can see I didn't put very much work into that term. You can see how the color will burn because it's way hotter in the termination on the tip that's kind of pointed out. But I'm gonna pick a hole right here for the Encalma. And I just do that by grabbing the center and spinning my hand. And if you just keep picking, 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 you'll pick a hole directly on center. You can see how I'm using the edge of the flame. The only thing in the flame is what I want to remove. That's a pretty precise move and the more you do it, the, the better you'll get at heating just what you want to remove to the point where it just pops open. So now we have a nice round hole 
pretty much on center and I'm just gonna use the blades of the true flame working jack to get in there and round it out. All right, so here we have the wigwag ball and the blank for the disc. And again, just cleaning off any kiln dust that got on there from heating in the kiln. And it's really important that these two holes match up really good. And here I'm kind of using an octagonal reamer to bump it up a little bit. But I talked about it a second ago. See how it just pushed that wall so it's it's flat. You, you want to get in there with the jacks and you actually want to go up inside there and push that wall forward so there's not a big old ring lip thing there that you're going to have to contend with later. And I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm always using the spring on the jacks as a reference for the hole size. And here I'm just heating the lips of these two balls that I'm going to encalmo until they're ripping hot. I'm going to pull it out of the flame. I'm going to just kiss one corner, roll them together and start spinning and then give it a little tug. It's kind of like a kiss. You, you kiss them together and you just give them a little, a little smooch and it kind of evens out that seal. And now I'm just heating between the balls and I'm going to try to expand that and make sure that seal went well before I pop the punny off here. I just did a little flash in the flame to thermoshock that punny. It helps them come off. And as hard as you try, this ball is never going to be perfect. So this is your chance to round out the ball and even out the wall weight. So when it encalmos, it's nice and even. So I'm going to get just the wigwag ball pretty hot. <clears throat> I'm going to puff it out a couple times just to ensure that the wall weight is fluid through there. And that's where if you have a term with more meat and more glass there, your termination is going to be bigger because you have more glass there. So here I'm starting to work that seal out slowly, bigger and bigger. Now I'm going to add a little heat into the disc part, into the orange, and I'm actually going to expand this into a ball shape. So boop, there you can kind of see just little steps. I didn't go all the way to the ball, but I went a step closer. <clears throat> now this heat looks like I should get to the ball. There it is. So pretty close to a ball shape. And now I'm going to start adding a little heat into the back of the disc. And there's a lot of juggling here when you're hot and then you're using gravity and air pressure a lot to manipulate this. So here I want everything to fall back. So I'm using gravity. My hand is pointed down at the table and you can see how the back of that disc kind of fell flat right there. And here's a little technique I learned from a Yushin Nady class that Glasscraft put on in 2013. You can actually, once you're close to that dish shape, you use centrifugal force, kind of like spinning out a foot to spin out the disc. And you build some heat in there and then you start going really fast and it actually sucks your disc nice and flat. And you can make really, really flat discs like this. But doing that, you can, if you spin it fast enough, you can make really, really thin discs. But yeah, that one's pretty thin. Little puff of air around everything out. And I think my wigwag was a little off center here, and this is a good trick. You just heat the front of it and you stop it and you kind of let that wigwag fall back into center. It won't work if you're way far off, but if you're close and you feel like you want to shift it over just a touch, you can get a little bit of movement out of that just by using gravity and letting that wigwag kind of fall into place. Ooh, so I think we got a finished product here. All right, that's the reverse wigwag disc. Let's have a look. 
Come into focus. Ah, oh, there it is. Looking pretty good. Pretty stoked on that. They could always be cleaner. They can always be better. I'm sure I'll, I'll nitpick some part of this, but pretty stoked on that. Um, hope this helps you guys. This is a really hard technique. Don't be afraid to practice it 20 times, 100 times, as long as it takes. You can do it. You got it. Just keep trying.